up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Julian of the Almighty Benighted. Thank you so much for being here today. It's great to have you here. Uh, thank you for inviting me, buddy. I'm very happy to to be interviewed by you. Yeah, it's an honor to be able to talk with you because it feels like only yesterday I was listening to uh, your uh, latest album, uh, Obscene Repressed, uh, which was the album that led us into this pandemic. And now we got a new song, A Personified Evil, that's just as brutal. Was A Personified Evil meant to be like a representation of like what a follow up to Obscene Repressed is going to be? Or is this just like a one off sort of thing? No, no, it's just, it's nothing to do with Obscene Repress. It's just a single that we wanted to to release during the pandemic because, you know, it's very frustrating not to be able to to promote your album when it's out. So we we are preparing some new songs and started to work on a new album. But in the meantime, as the, the main thing that we do is to is to write music, we, uh, we wanted to release some songs to keep our fans and people entertained with our music and uh, and surprise them with new stuff, waiting for a new album and for finally the occasion to to promote our new songs live. Yeah, and what what I've noticed is with Benighted, like you always bring in an essence of brutality. Like I remember when uh, I, I, this was a long time ago now, it's crazy to think it was like almost three years ago, but on the Aborted tour, uh, it was like 2018 or 2019, you, uh, left the, you left the Knitting Factory a smoldering crater that day. Um, but, uh, like when you like compare, especially now that the band has been, you know, been around for over 20 years, have, has Benighted always taken a new approach to every album or have you always tried to maintain a certain aspect or maintain a certain formula? Well, I would say that the formula at first, it depends on the lineup we have, because we have, we had many, many members in Benighted from an album to another. And, uh, I think that's actually, uh, Oh yeah, the, the the first time in a long time that we have the same lineup from the last EP to Obscene Repressed and maybe to release some new album after. Because United we have such a busy schedule that it's hard to keep uh, musicians uh, <laughs> to, because we all have jobs, uh, regular jobs in our life, so it's difficult to find time to tour. And uh, uh, I would say that uh, for Necrobreed, for example, it was the very first time that Manu, our new guitarist, uh, had the challenge to write an entire album by his own almost because he's the main writer in United and uh, he did such a great job. And for Obscene Repressed, he tried to push all the limits a bit far and uh, put more hardcore in our, in, our, in our music, like it was, for example, on the album Carnival Sublime. And uh, I would say that uh, Obscene Repressed is a perfect balance between brutality, groove, and uh, you know these insane, disgusting parts with uh, with disgusting vocals as well. And uh, for the next for the next album, I guess we'll try to find another personal identity to the album because we don't like to repeat ourselves. We like every album to have its own spirit and its own its own sound as well. So I guess for the new album, it will be a bit different as well, like every album of United. Being that, you know, and this is last year, so it almost feels a little anticlimactic acting about asking about it now, but last year was the 20 year anniversary of the debut of Benighted. Like, can you maybe see when when touring picks up again, you doing like a 20th anniversary, maybe do like a, an album, a song from every album in the catalog or something like that? Oh, we, we didn't plan it. Actually, when it was, uh, I think it was two years ago that we already celebrated the the 20 years anniversary of Benighted with a show and uh, with the EP uh, Dogs Always Bite Harder Than The Master. And we made some special songs, special just for the anniversary EP. And uh, I think no, now we will just move on and try to promote Obscene Repress because we are so frustrated not to have been able to perform the song on stage so far. I mean, just once in Czech Republic last year, but that's all, all the, all the other gigs were canceled anyway. So we are waiting for the first right and uh first good occasion to promote our new songs on stage it's gonna be so brutal i've always said that like the way that like swing music was the soundtrack to world war ii i think death metal is going to be the soundtrack to this pandemic like i i think this album is going to be historical one way or another yeah it could fit perfectly yeah, you're right <laughs> yeah i i look uh, my cousin is a surgeon and he listens to carcass when he does surgery so it could work that's perfect. I work in psychiatry as well, so in, 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 in medical stuff, so I understand what you mean. 
really, if you don't mind me asking, just working in the medical field uh, influence uh, your lyricism or even help influence the music? Because it's not even, you know, obviously working in the medical fields, you know, people could say, oh, that's brutal. That's so metal. But there's also like a form of interaction that you have to that you have with an individual. There's an essence of trust, which is, uh, you know, something that could be a very scary concept. And, you know, there's the element of pressure and all that. Does this influence who you are as an artist as well? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, uh, all the all the lyrics of Benighted comes uh, come from my professional experience because I work in psychiatry now for oh my god, twenty one year, uh, yeah, almost. <laughs> and uh, I have huge experience in psychiatry, and every every album in Benighted, of Benighted uh, is about the the story of a patient suffering from a from a psychiatric disease. And uh, of course, it's not exactly the same disease that the patient I take care of, but I have a huge uh, inspiration from my work, actually. And the good thing is that, for example, I bring a lot of music at my work as well, because I play music with my patients at the hospital, the psychiatric hospital I'm working in. And so it's a perfect balance between benighted, being inspired by my work, and the music and death metal and blah, 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 inspiring me to do my work better and uh, help the patient that I take care of. That's a very inspiring story, and I'm really glad uh, you were able that you're using music to help make a difference in the world, and that making yeah. that difference influences you. It's like a really positive, never-ending cycle. Perfect. Is there ever been a time where maybe though your personal experiences or your personal uh, either trials or tribulations could have helped influence your lyrics as well, or has it always been sort of like looking outward and observing more? Uh, I, I would say that it most um, it, it's most um, mostly my my job. We experience the lyrics. I I don't uh, I don't talk a lot about myself in the lyrics. It's really more. I try to write stories, of course, uh, which are, which have to be scary. But I always pay attention to keep the reality of the symptoms of the disease I'm talking about because I really hate this kind of cliche that people have about schizophrenia, for example, like this. Uh, multiple personality disorder this kind of stuff that you you never meet in psychiatry it's so fucking it's really really rare it's and it's it, it became a giant cliche because of uh, of the movies because as soon as you talk about schizophrenia people think oh that's the kind of disease where you have two three or 20 people in the same head and no this is definitely not, not what schizophrenia is and uh, it gives a very bad yeah kind of publicity to my patients who already have a very hard life and it pisses me off to see this kind of stuff with uh, with a sentence you know uh, written based on a true story or something I think that's mostly a lie yeah so in behind it I always pay attention to talk about the disease the way they work uh, really <laughs> they really work like this and uh, the truth about the symptoms and how the patients feel and uh, how they how they fall how they fall in sickness what, what can make someone fall in sickness and fall, you know, very severe disease like uh, schizophrenia, for example. Well, I heard, um, I was reading about it because even though I'm not a psychologist, it always has been a very interesting subject matter to me. I heard the term schizophrenia like was used so broadly back uh, like in the early 20th century like if you were autistic you were considered schizophrenic if you yeah. had depression you were considered schizophrenic if you you know had if you suffered through addiction you were considered schizophrenic or ptsd mm -hmm. was schizophrenia so like it almost seems like the term schizophrenia like is just used so liberally now to the point where like it really doesn't like it really undermines what that actual disease is Totally, and it's the same with bipolar disease now. Everybody is bipolar, you know. If it, are you sad sometimes? Oh yes. And are you very, very happy and excited sometimes? Oh yes. So you are bipolar, you know. And it's kind. Of, the problem is, it, it's kind of trendy now to say that you are bipolar, and and it really affects the people who are really suffering for what we call uh, in French. Uh, the translation from French would be a. Uh, uh, um, man maniaco depressive psychosis i don't know if it's the same in, the, in english or not but this is the reality of the disease and it's not like uh yeah i have my uh, my mood is changing all the time so i am bipolar no you can be someone truly normal but with a mood who is changing a lot and you don't have to claim that you are bipolar for that you know 
Yeah. And being that you analyze these diseases, you know, it is a very unsettling subject matter for people who are experiencing it and people who are not. But is there and, you know, Benighted's music is completely brutal. I always feel uplifted from it because, you know, it really expresses a rage that I feel. But is there maybe also maybe a positive messaging that you could express with it saying that you that these diseases can be overcome and that you can, you know, conquer these demons that we uh, are inflicted with? Well, the positive message, I would say that the first positive message that I try to to give in the benighted lyrics is that we have to get rid of uh, this cliche that people suffering from psychosis are dangerous people, mostly for the others, because that's not true. They are mostly dangerous for themselves before, uh, because uh, a lot of schizophrenia commit suicide, because when the delirium comes down and that they realize all the emptiness their mind was fighting against, they just kill themselves and it's just not a call for help they just cannot understand that because you know schizophrenia is like uh, something uh, the, the last the last chance uh, the last twisted chance the mind found to stay alive you know to keep you alive to to fall in some delusional reality because the reality you're experiencing is unbearable for your mind and uh, in a positive way in benighted i would say I think the, it's not in the lyrics. It's mostly uh, when people come to, when people come to me, actually, because lots of people know that I work in psychiatry, and uh, knowing that uh, a death metal singer, you know, with a brutal music, brutal lyrics, and blah blah blah, uh, is a guy that works in psychiatry. I have many many fans coming to me and say, you know, I suffer with this disease, and I take this medication and blah, blah, blah. And that it moves me a lot that people can trust me enough to talk about this because it's it's a very, I don't know, it's a very sensitive subject to, to, to bring on. And uh, I can discuss with them about that. And in that way, I feel that I, I help them felt understood. And, and you, know, because you see what I mean? Absolutely. And I really think that Benighted completely kills the notion that death metal is all about brutality like you know i'm sure that people who have not experienced benighted before and then maybe analyze the lyrics are thinking that you know the band is trying to be edgy or whatnot but i think like your music has like this i call it freudian death metal that's what i call it okay no thanks yeah and has do you also like look back at the history of psychology as an influence from you know studying freud to you know discovering how different treatments have developed over time has that also been a source of inspiration as well or has it just been your direct experiences no no mostly my direct experiences because uh, i'm very careful about you know things coming up and new medications because you know <laughs> you know pharmacy can always lie so i'm very careful and i i uh, i use only my own experience of the things that work uh, the things that work and don't work on uh, on, the, on the patients so that's why i stay i i strictly stay to my own experience in very it does it almost feel that maybe like a song is almost like a personal patient as well because you have to figure out what works and what doesn't work and you know and then when the song is developed you almost feel like that that is sort of like the first step in a way or am i just completely over analyzing it no no i think you can be right yeah and why do you feel like maybe because you know there's been there's been a lot of uh, music that has expressed mental health like uh fellow label mates uh from greece uh, nightfall they wrote a whole black metal album about the struggles of depression but you know like uh the singer of Beartooth, a metalcore band is also very uh proactive in expressing mental health and stuff is uh if you don't mind me asking why you feel that the this style that you have is sort of like the best style to get your message across well i would say it fits it fits very well it matches very well because the, our music is, uh, I mean, it, it, can, it can be uh, experienced like the brutality of uh, a panic attack, for example, something coming very brutally to your face and uh, something, you know, surprising sometimes that it, it just calm down and then it comes again like a train in the face or something, you know, and it, it brings you, it makes you feel a lot of different feelings, you know, something like uh when sometimes you just feel you know like ah, i'm comfortable with some parts because they are very creepy and then the brutality comes again and i mean it's some kind of uh how can i say that artistic positive experience of what can be anguish hallucinations uh what, what, what else uh 
delirium and this kind of stuff. And if you don't mind me asking too, because this year is also, you know, we talked about uh, last year being the 20 year anniversary of the debut self title, but this is also the 10 year anniversary of Asylum Cave. Now that album is just, oh, yeah. I put that up there, Tomb of the Mutilated, Stench of Redemption, like death metal classic. Mm -hmm. Like, so I just want to know like what the thought process was behind Asylum Cave 10 years ago. Like, how do you look back at that a decade ago and what was sort of like the expression that you were having through that album? Well, I would say Asylum Game was the very first album that uh, represented a huge step for the Night Kid career because that's the album we we signed with Season of Mist with, and uh, it was also the album that we we had a very stable lineup, and it was very helpful to you know not to you know introduce new member or blah 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 just feel comfortable with everyone and say so now what do what do we play? What kind, what kind of uh, or, um, orientation we want to take for, the, for this album? We have time, we take our time, we do something very good because we have no hurry. Everybody is at the same place, you know, because I, I tell you that the, the lineup changes can be very, very exhausting. And uh, it was very comfortable at this time. And I think that's why uh, Asylum came was a huge step because we had the time with no pressure at all to prepare everything the way we wanted. I think that was the very, positive uh, point which makes the, this album very comfortable to write to record and after that to promote on stage of course yeah and and so this almost was like a turning point in benighted's career in a way it was almost yeah. kind of like a, almost kind of like the halfway point of the new era in a way yeah totally totally i agree yeah because you notice too like with asylum cave i mean just the fact that like when you compared asylum cave to like icon or you know uh uh, psychosis or any of those previous albums you notice like a drastic change and then when you move on to uh carnivore sublime and necrobreed it almost seems like you know there was sort of like it almost seemed like benighted sort of found themselves on uh asylum cave in a way i think so yeah i think that's the that's the the album where we really uh, embraced the identity we wanted to have as a as a musical band so uh before we go I want to thank you so much for your time today and for such a great okay. conversation. Uh, is there just anything else with Benighted that you would like to promote when this godforsaken virus that shall not be named is finally behind us? Can you please bring Benighted back to the States? We really want to see you here. We need, we need, we need Benighted in the States. <laughs> Bro, you have no idea how much I would love that. When, when we toured in the U.S. Uh, three years ago, it was two years ago, sorry, it was such a dream because we, we never had the occasion to come to the United States before for a, for a big tour like that we've aborted and uh, it was really a, a unique experience and I want to come back as soon as possible because every everybody is so fucking nice so fucking welcoming in the States everywhere we went people were crazy and uh, so many beautiful things to discover where, uh, aside the shows I mean so I'm really looking forward to come back and for a longer time this time. Yep, and we, we'll welcome you here with open arms. But thank you so much. Everybody, we thank are you, here man. with Benighted. Check out the new single, A Personified Evil. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We will see you next time.